My warm welcome, welcome to all the dignitaries of the dais and of the dais. Uh, I would like to give a very brief introduction of the dignitaries of the dais. Uh, our chief guest for today's program is uh, O. P. J. Lalun Jonga. He is Minister of State for Law and Judicial and Parliamentary Affairs for Transport and for Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Um, we are very fortunate to have you here, sir. It is a, a very important meeting, a very important seminar for us. And a person representing from the state is always welcome. As our plan is to uh, develop some uh, some uh, guidelines or some uh, suggestions based on our discussions. So that uh, we wanted a representative from the state. So very much thank you to come to us, sir. Thank you. Uh, the chairman of this session is our uh, honorable pro vice chancellor sir, Mr. Rambo Padera. Sir, uh, very, very thank you to you to kindly consent to come to the program. Uh, he came to Mizoram in 1995, a uh, very long time. 85. 85, sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 85. Uh, at that time, Mizoram University was not there, it was a campus of uh, Nehu, Northeastern Hill University. He came during that time and uh, his uh, experience, wide experience in Mizoram is much more than us. So we feel that sir, you can contribute much for this seminar. Uh, sir belongs to a state which is known for agriculture, Punjab. And this program is on agribusiness. He is having exposure to this place also more than 30 years or nearly 30 years now. So uh, sir, this combination of this representing a state which is uh, advanced in agriculture and your experience here will help us a lot to develop our uh, offerings or our suggestions. Thank you sir for coming. Uh, then uh, we are having guest of honor, uh, Mr. Hassan Malik, he is general manager of NAMAR. Uh, and very late hours actually we contacted him and uh, he is really very, we are very grateful to you sir that you accepted our request at very last moment that you consented and came on time. Thank you sir for being here and uh, our association will continue after this seminar also as this agriculture has to do with uh, NABAR. So we will be both association will be working for now. Then uh, I would like to introduce Dr. D. Satyanarayana sir sitting on that side. He is Secretary of Indian Society of Agricultural Marketing Hyderabad. Uh, this seminar is co-jointly uh, uh, organized by our department, Department of Commerce, Mizoram University and the society. So he is coming all the way from Hyderabad to attend this program. Uh, I would like to highlight, uh, he did his MSc, he did his MA, he did MBA, he did LLP, he did PhD and again he did PhD, he is double PhD. So it's great sir that you could get these many time, this much time to study yes. and uh, uh, he is associated with the, uh, the society since 1984-86, since beginning of the society he is actively participating there and uh, they are having a chain of such seminars in different states, all the states they are going every year, uh, this year it is uh, chance of our university, our state to represent him. Thank you sir for conceptualizing this kind of thought to come out with some policy documents for each state from uh, suggestions out of the stakeholders. Thank you sir for this novel idea. I would like to uh, welcome Professor Nakutin Kuma sir. He is our senior professor in our, our school. He belongs to library and information science department. Uh, he is, yes, sir, we are very very welcome. He is a uh, member of our board of studies at uh, all the meetings. He is always present and is always there to extend all helpful hints, all helpful suggestions. So sir, I thank you for all those suggestions what you are offering and we expect that that will continue in long time. I welcome you sir. Uh, then uh, before going for other introduction, I would like to request our students to, to 
help our uh, honourable pro master to offer a gift to the chief guest of the system. Some stakeholders from the state and some 
30 members from different departments and there will be one and a half hour discussion on different issues pertaining to agriculture and development and uh, marketing and uh, we will try to develop a policy paper uh, suggestions for the stakeholders to government and uh, that we will give to the state government as outcome of this seminar and after that there will be a very session and uh, so tomorrow it will be that is a brief idea about the program we are going to conduct today. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Dr. Sathanayan sir to come and tell something about his society. He is doing a great job through this society. So what are the objectives of this society and all he will highlight. And then he will give a brief idea about the theme of the seminar, sir. Leaders, students, media, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, on behalf of Indian Society of Agricultural Marketing, I express gratitude to the Vice Chancellor who have honor, offered to host the seminar in your campus. Special thanks to this university who have taken interest in agribusiness of the state. I am very sure that the university will contribute the best for the development of the agri business in the years to come. I wish to say, say a few words about uh, the Indian Society of Agricultural Marketing, which is the collaborator of this seminar. This society was founded in 1986 and uh, became active since 1987. And without any interruption, we have been organizing annual conferences taking the ongoing important issues in agricultural marketing, discuss and then forward the recommendations to respective organizations. And also some seminars of uh, domestic importance and also international subject. And since 2008, we have started this agribusiness series in different states. Agribusiness potential of different states and this is the 14th state we, have, or we are organizing this type of seminar and after each seminar we have brought out the volume presenting all the outcome of the seminars forwarding it to the respective organizations to take necessary developmental activities and as you know or many of the scholars know Mizoram has got an excellent potential in agri production and some of them are high value crops but most of them are produced, consumed and perished within the state. There is, the production is uh, very haphazard, aimless and they never think of the market linkages for what for various reasons be socio economic, it could be cultural, it could be inherent inactivity of the system. Whatever may be the reason, but the produce of the state has high commercial value. Once you really put it into the chain, and I'm sure that the farmers of this state will be immensely benefited. Though your regular crops are like rice, cotton, sugar cane, etc., you have exotic crops like you know, passion fruit, bird eye chilies, and a lot of floricultural activities are also around. You produce, but do not link up with the mainland markets. That is the biggest flaw in the marketing system present in this state. The production, in, it is having potential, it is having the quantity is also reasonably very high, but doesn't get into the marketing stream. Most of the times we talk of connectivity, which is very easy for us to complain 
that we are not having connectivity. But today, the government of India has come with a proposal to make the nation a single market by proposing electronic marketing. E now that is what is called. A producer, a seller, a farmer can sell his produce by sitting here across the country if he is more uh, vibrant, more visual, entrepreneur, he can even sell his produce outside the country borders. So this e concept is a wonderful concept. It will completely neutralize the problem of energy. So this is to be now uh, made more popular and your farmers should be able to get into this system of e -NAM. Then, then coming to the seminar as such, we have almost 25 papers uh, covering almost all the subjects uh, relevant to agribusiness in the Mizoram state. And this, this, this the discussion of the seminar will be brought out in the form of a volume and that will be again given to all the scholars, paper writers and other organizations related to agribusiness both in the state as well as the centre. And a special appeal to the minister, fortunately, is here uh, and he is young enough to take the agribusiness forward in the state. And these recommendations may kindly be taken seriously by the state, the government and try to implement as much as is possible. Wherever there is a speed breaker, wherever there is a snap, they can invite the experts and get the problems solved as a matter of So our, our society's services are always available to underline free of cost. We will be willing to come and help the state government or any other organization or a farmer groups to further their agribusiness activity in the state without any cost. So this is an assurance from the society. So finally to say a special thanks to the paper writers who have taken pains to write good papers. And I also wish they should participate in the discussion activity and help draw viable recommendations. Luckily we have very eminent people to chair the technical sessions and I am very sure that the recommendations of the seminar will go a long way in the economic development of Mizoram State. Uh, to say a word about the availability of the minister he has taken time to come here, he raised the occasion and also hope that he will take this seminar of food also to get a formula and I expected a, a minister you know, very huge personality lot of missing our, 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 our side the minister's means uh, it's a different picture so he is so simple young and he cannot so I am especially thankful to him to have taken time to grace this action thank you sir Thank you everybody. I hope to see you again. Thank you, Dr. for your introduction about the society. Uh, then a brief introduction about the theme, the, all the theme, and the way we are going to proceed. Thank you, for, sir, for elaborating that. Uh, he talked about e-marketing. He promised that uh, the services offered by a society will be extended to our state if we are willing and that will be free of cost. Thank you, thank you sir for offering that service to us. Uh, he thanked all the contributors, 26 to be precise we are having as of now. So he thanked to all of them and then at last he praised the minister for being very simple and very polite. Uh, sir, um, this is your first visit here. I welcome again being a first person here. Uh, that is the common thing in Mizoram. When I came, I was also thinking like this. Only. That minister means at least five cars before and then six cars behind. Uh, Convoy should be there. 
but when I saw here um, uh, a single car for uh, even for uh, uh, governor only one because that is the protocol so that is there only one vehicle in there. So sir, if you visit my university, I am from BHU, Manasudha University. When we see most, we see most, there are three, four cars with it. <laughs> so actually I was little surprised when I came by seeing this culture here. Sir, one more thing you will be surprised to see. Um, uh, this society, Mizo society is a classless society indeed. In perfect, it is not only in words, indeed they are classless. Uh, you will find chief teacher standing behind you when they are taking food. So there is no preference kind of thing. Everyone is same in this state. That is unique thing. And I hope that will continue forever. Thank you sir for all your speech. Uh, then I would like to request uh, Mr. Hassan Malik sir. Uh, General Manager of Navar, to give a short speech. England Chibai, very good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, dear chief guest, Honorable. Uh, Sri T. J. Balnu Kwanga, Honorable Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, uh, Professor uh, Bharatendu Singh Kanvela, Head of Department of Commerce, uh, Dr. T. Shatila Raya, Secretary Indian Society for Agriculture Marketing, and uh, Professor Kumar, Indoran University, Professor Madera, uh, Professor Shing, uh, dignitaries of the dais and uh, academicians and uh, dear students and researchers of the Mizoram So, uh, it is a matter of pleasure and privilege for me to be here. Uh, this seminar is of course uh, of a very um, seminal importance to the development of the state. Uh, indeed, if you see agri-business, is one of the fields of academics that is coming up very prominently in India. Just like the disciplines of management or economics, agree, business, its own right, is a discipline now. Because uh, agriculture uh, from uh, the subsistence level is uh, being promoted and has a need to go uh, to commercial level. And when it happens, there has to be agree bringers like entrepreneurs in industry. So, uh, agribusiness is the need of the hour, need of the day. India, if you see, has long since achieved uh, food security and uh, India has achieved the sufficiency production of food grains. And agriculture has uh, uh, grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, there has been green revolution. Then again, there are debates of late whether green revolution is all that green. And organic farming is coming to the fore. So, so many developments are there. Now in this context, agribusiness has assumed a tremendous importance in academics and, and as well as in the practical affairs of the state. So in this context, it is a uh, great thing that uh, ISAM is organizing this chain of seminars in different states. And the board is happy uh, to partner with them uh, to be of some help and uh, to have some contribution in this regard. So uh, I would just touch upon the uh, what NABAD is exactly doing, a very brief outline of that and also one or two uh, points of importance that has to be kept in mind when formulating the strategy and when formulating the way forward. Uh, NABAD basically being an offshoot of Reserve Bank of India uh, which came into being in 1982 uh, was created uh, by Government of India scattered to agriculture and rural development in a coordinated and holistic way. Basically, in short, NABAR does credit planning, NABAR does refinancing of the banks, it supervises the certain kinds of banks like rural banks and cooperative banks, builds their capacity, then builds uh, entrepreneurship and development pilots with the help of NGOs in farm sector and off farm sector and also assist the state governments on behalf of government of India by extending loans to RID and many other funds for infrastructure development of the states. 
So there are a gamut of functions. Now, so far as IT business is concerned, uh, what is important is that NABARD does a credit planning. A credit planning which is linked to the potentials of the district. These potentials are available potentials as well as whatever is coming up from the government sites through plans, programs, budgets and policies. NABARD try to link it up and prepares for the banks a credit plan which they can exploit from year to year. Then these district credit plans are aggregated into a state focus paper. So that highlights the problems of the state in credit, the states that should be taken and exploitable potential. So these are reference documents for the banks to act upon. So SLBC or the lead bank system acts upon this and prepares actually bank-wise plans which have to be executed, bank-wise branch-wise. But the background of that is given by Lama. <coughs> Secondly, I have already hinted at the infrastructure assistance through RIDF. There is also nowadays WIF which is important for every business potential. In fact, uh, uh, ministers, uh, our minister will be happy to know that uh, Mizoram is recognized as one of the few states which do very good utilization of RIDF. It may be a small state, but there is no non standard project in RIDF. So that speaks for the efficiency and the dedication of the state government in execution of projects. Uh, there is a, hardly any state in India which is having a non-starter project and Mizoram is one of them. Mizoram is no non-starter project. In WIF, Mizoram is doing well. Uh, there are collection centers, there are storage centers which are coming up. Even uh, this year also many proposals are coming from Mizoram government. Besides this, a micro-irrigation fund has been created by government of India which will be helping in horticulture, crops, plantations, etc. through drip irrigation and uh, sprinkler irrigation, etc. Then AMIF, Agricultural Marketing Infrastructure Fund has also come up last year. So a food processing fund is also there. So these funds are administered by NAPAD. And these funds, and especially RID, has been of seminal importance in creating an infrastructure for uh, rural development and agriculture. Now these are part, in the current year's budget, Central government has put lot of emphasis on uh, FPOs. FPOs is farmer producer organization. That is a kind of a professionalization of farmers because now production is not a key problem for India. Even though production always engages our attention and has to engage. Now the problem in India is of marketing. And for marketing in agriculture sector, the importance is we do not have this scale of economy. So aggregation is a challenge. So for aggregation of uh, this output and also for managing the inputs and for accessing credit, the FPO is a professional attempt. So uh, there are good FPOs promoted by Mizoram state government departments like horticulture. Uh, there are also FPOs promoted by NABAD. Still the challenge is ahead of us. More FPOs are in the offing. They have to be promoted. Then aggregation and bargaining power of the farmers will increase to that extent. So all these are important. Now, uh, I was just going through the schedules. It is full of very interesting topics. Uh, two thoughts come to my mind when we go for this uh, agricultural marketing. Very often, enthusiastically, I have seen in many states many programs start suddenly. There is an Icarian increase, there is a great ambitious increase in the things. Suddenly, things also stop. Because marketing arrangements are sometimes very precise. Suppose if there is a tie-up arrangement in a particular company, there is a particular demand in a neighboring country. Supposing that demand fails because of some economic factor or because of some political disturbance, then suddenly that marketing gets uh, jeopardized and the farming also uh, faces problem. So uh, risk is there because it is agri business and business means there will be a risk. So risk cannot be negated, risk has to be mitigated, has to be managed. So what are the risks we have to see, we have to diversify those risks, we have to have wide scale marketing, we have to have marketing inside the state also, we have to have different markets, not only a few niche markets or fragile uh, ambitious markets. So that aspect also in our strategy I request that that should be kept in view. Uh, then secondly, the minister for uh, environment is here, environmental consideration is very important. When we are going for development, there is always necessarily a trade-off between development and environment. So, we should do development not in a very imbalanced way but in a sustainable way. So that the future generations also can enjoy the prosperity, the benefits 
and the planet and the people can survive. So sustainability also has to be taken into consideration. Operational and marketing risks, including legal risks, all these things have to be taken. Why we told legal risks? You may be knowing. Some years back there was a lot of Rakis water prawn contamination in the eastern coast of India. Suddenly a Supreme Court case came because of some PIF and the things were banned. So legal aspects also you have to see. They are linked to the ecological aspect and also to the administrative aspects of the country. So all these operational risks of marketing and still more important, the environmental aspects have to be taken care of. We have to do development but not endangering environment, preserving environment. Mijoram is a great state. It has got, as uh, Professor was telling, dragon fruit, sacha and chi, so many types of new fruits also, new cultivations also, spices also. And very often they are organic by default. But to get the organic formal certification, you have to undergo the process. So that also has to be planned. Again, it was hinted by him that things are in a somewhat scattered way. They are very rich, but they are very scattered. They have to be coordinated. How much we should go for food security? 35% of rice of Mizoram, of the need, we are producing. Should we increase it or should we go for commercial cultivation? There should be thought regarding this. There should be comprehensive planning regarding this. The big picture should emerge. The data should be there. So, it is not only by pilots, specific good pilots. One has to do the coordination, coordinated thinking also. How much we should go for food crops, how much we should go for plantation. Because uh, the resources are limited. They are very rich, but they are also limited. So, and how much we should go for high-tech agriculture, so that we can have more crops also in less area. So, uh, all these things also should be thought of. So, risk management, this is a point that should be taken into our consideration while discussing the things. Another thing is uh, sustainability. And third thing is the coordinated thinking of all the sectors, so that the state will develop in a proper way. I hope this seminar will have some positive takeaways and will contribute to the development of the state. And this state, it is an amazing state with a great ethos, great culture, great civil culture and a rare type of peace and peace and law and order and uh, civic consciousness, organizations, the people's culture, ethos, everything is very high. This state needs to be developed and will develop by the grace of God. Thank you. Hello. Thank you sir for your very informative speech. Uh, sir, I highlighted a few lines he gave a brief picture of uh, development in the field of agriculture in India. Then he talked about role of NABAR in the field of indigenous and agriculture. He highlighted select schemes of NABAR. He highlighted performance of Mizoram under different schemes which are being implemented in Mizoram. Then he offered his suggestions to go for sustainable development in the agricultural business, agri business. He talked about uh, legal involvement of agri business. He touched about risk management under agri business. So he has touched about all, almost not all, but many of the issues under agri business. Thank you, sir, for uh, for giving us a way to discuss for next two days. We are going to deliberate on all these issues, and I hope we will come out with a good suggestions on these things. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Professor Nambu Singh Kumar sir to give a brief speech. Sir.
You can speak something about the schools and other things, whatever you like. But I'm not very much conversant with this topic. I will not take much time. You see, Mizoram University have various departments and departments. The departments are grouped into some, I think, eight schools. All of schools is the same district, call it the same district, so that is School of Economics, Management and Information Science. Under this school, we have six PG academic departments and one PG academic department. PG academic departments are Economics, Commerce, Level Information Science, Management, uh, Mascom, and Tourism, Tourism and Hotel Management. One PG academic department is Statistics, the school took up the, all the academic activities of the various academic departments in the school. It's about the thing which are done in the school. Then I'd like to tell you about this talk thing about visual society. I was born and brought up in a small village of Mizoram. I experienced the working culture of Mizoram society. I also did so, so many works. You see, the Mizoram society is very much associated with agriculture. All the households are expected to have this zooming every year. They have to have at least one pig or some Chickens, I should say. In the society, pig and chicken have impact, particularly in the marriage of our society. I don't tell you much about these things. Because it is not very much concerned. Therefore, the life of Mizoram society is very much concerned and associated with agriculture. You see, Every households are doing their best to have agricultural products to one their life. They don't like to depend on the others. Even if they don't have money also, they don't like to borrow from the others. They prefer to die. That is the thing. Therefore, they went to live by their own products. At the same time, as you say, in terms of money, the village people are very poor. Once I experienced in a village, they have one small market. In their village, there is no money, I should say. You see, they cannot sell their products. But they are doing like they call this partner system, no? they are changing their products. This is the thing. They are very poor. Therefore, this seminar topic is very much concerned with the Mizoram society. Therefore, I feel very happy to have this seminar organized by the Thomas Department and this Indian Society of Agricultural Marketing. But I feel, as you say, upset that the little persons that agriculture is not the best facing today. <laughs> Therefore, what I have in this feeling today, anyway, it will be a better good discussion. When I look at your this program and your papers, you are going to discuss about farming, gardening, dating, and any kinds of digital products and marketing and other things. During this Two days we are going to discuss 26 papers. These are all relevant in the local persons, agriculture and their working cultures. Therefore, I appreciate your papers. At the same time, I have one request to the participants, particularly to the local participants, Mizo participants. <coughs> you may discuss a lot during the Today seminar. It should not be the end. Try to write something in the local newspapers in local language. 
what we have discussed here. Therefore, the state government, as well as the local person, will understand what is to be done for the promotion of these agricultural products, marketing and other things. Otherwise, it will be publishing a proceeding, somebody for for their PCD, their PCD, this and that. Nobody will know about your work. Okay? Therefore, this is my humble request to the local persons. Please be attentive and try to write something in local newspaper or in source of your local person can understand and read it. Those, I feel you can do like this. It will be very, very. <laughs> it's a good thing for the local person. Therefore, it may be blocked. They are working culture or they are not something what to do about their agricultural works and their laboring. It is a thing. Therefore, I wish all the participants a grand success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Professor uh, Kumar. He is Dean of uh, Service and he is from uh, Department of Library Science. He introduced our school, the departments under our school. He talked about the development in different departments within his school. He talked about the, or he highlighted about the Mizo Society, the life in Mizo Society. He mentioned that life in Mizoram is very close to agriculture. It is actually part of our life. Agriculture is part of our life. Uh, he mentioned that the topic of the seminar, the theme of the seminar is very relevant and very timely. Uh, but one thing what he missed and he is very true also that the farmers are missing, the real farmers are missing. So let's hope sir that we will have something which we offer to the farmers to raise their levels and their production. Uh, then he requested to the participants that the discussion what is going to happen in next two days should not end with the program. It should continue, it should go beyond, much beyond. It should reach to the real stakeholders. It should raise the life of farmers. And uh, it should not be just deliberated, put in a paper and that paper is in Almira and finish. It should not be like that and sir on behalf of the organizers I promise. Uh, uh, the way we are going to do it, especially through three sessions of technical sessions of discussions, that will be summarized. Then the identified issues in these three sessions will be discussed in charity session tomorrow. Uh, those all discussions we are going to compile in form of some suggestions, and those suggestions will be forwarded to the stakeholders uh, like state government or maybe the central government or wherever it needs, wherever it is required. So, on behalf of the organizers, I promise uh, we will take it beyond and it will not finish tomorrow. But uh, thank you sir for highlighting all those things. Uh, thanks all at all the here sir. Now I would like to request our chief guest, uh, Sri T.J. Dharmat Kwangali. He is Honorable Minister of State for Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Sir, please. Professor who worked in Kuma, Professor Bartan Lu Singh, Professor N. Roken Jo Singh, resource persons and all participants who are present to, uh, here today in one week all. Uh, it is an honor to uh, no further for me to stand before you, before you uh, to address this seminar. I want to give my thanks to Dr. P. Satya Narayan for offering a free training. And uh, another, another uh, point for that I want to give my thanks to the uh, chairman that uh, he appreciated and he, uh, he made a good comment about my coming here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, this is what I like, what I want is that simple, simple thinking, simple living, but working for, for the nation. And uh, I would like to 
give my thanks to Commerce Department and the you and India Society of Culture Marketing Hyderabad for their invitation. However, uh, when they when I received the invitation, I consider that uh, I am considering that whether I am the right person to be a chief guest in this agri business. Since I am not looking after the Department of Commerce as well as Agriculture Department. Uh, but after that, I considered that I was involved in uh, a student union, student body in my college time. And I have deep attachment towards the student and their educational uh, activities. And so uh, that of that of big agri business potential, which is not my portfolio, not my portfolio, as I already mentioned that in a minister as a minister. But uh, I am not thinking that I am not alienated to the subject since I hear from some high uh, that is this part of Mizoram which hold good potential for agri business. I have been involved in the system of agriculture in paddy field and zooming also uh, since my, uh, from my childhood. So before start uh, before starting my short speech or a long speech, I don't know. <laughs> Let me start. Uh, but before that, I want to introduce who are accompanying me. Uh, I want to invite Mr. Larry Noma, MCS, my personal secretary and under secretary of Tasco. Julian Sara, he is from my, uh, my constituency, he is our block secretary in Shanghai. Uh, and the last one will be Pula uh, Tansuma. Army of Mizoram National, Mizoram National, Mizoram National Army since 1966, uh, who fought for Mizoram for our today, for Mizoram today. <coughs> so today I am very interesting this topic that agri uh, business uh, potential, agri business potential of Mizoram uh, from. From, from the point of, from the view of my department, forest department, how, how, I, how and why I can say that because of that, uh, we are planning uh, a forest station. For a forest station, good for, for having good forest station program, uh, is required a proper agri business. For that, I am very interested in this uh, topic. So, 60% of the people of Mizoram are engaged in agricultural activities. Uh, however, the economic contribution of agricultural sector is low due to limit in the scope of marketing and absence of processing plants for value addition of agricultural produce. Mizoram has favorable soil and climatic conditions which are conducive for agricultural activities. Although excellent amount of various crops have been produced, I believe that the main issue of efficient marketing lies in the value addition. <coughs> crops such as ginger, turmeric, passion fruit, citrus fruit, and oranges are produced in large quantity in Mizoram. However, they are being marketed as raw crops without being processed. Being perishable item, the farmers are not able to get their fair share of profit due to rotting of the crops and due to lack of facilities of uh, cold storage. So, the perishable items are gold without having a value, value 
So, if they have been processed and market, the value of the product would be enhanced and would be beneficial both by the farmers and the uh, active business uh, businessmen. Our government, under the guidance of the other good chief minister, who is on tariff, has taken various initiatives in regards to augmentation of agricultural products and agri-products. Our flagship program, socio-economic development program, envisages increase of agricultural products and provisions of various infrastructure, infrastructure for promotion of agribusiness. Agriculture board has been set up for development of agriculture and its related activities. As we all know that Mizoram is a land uh, and hilly state with unfair road, road condition. Difficulties have been faced by the farmers in marketing uh, of their produce since the only existing routes are roadways. In order to facilitate the farmers, we are taking initiative uh, by the transport department uh, for development of inland water transport for navigable rivers in Mizoram. I hope that this will provide alternative alternate mode of transportation which is cheap and efficient. In order to provide wider scope of business, initiative has been taken for establishment of integrate, integrated check posts at Zogutar. You may think that uh, it may be not concerning about the uh, business, but this is the one of the important uh, this integrated check posts in the boundary areas. Establishment of the integrated check post will promote the agri business through export of the processed and not processed agricultural products uh, in, uh, to Myanmar. Apart from Zomutar effort will be made for establishment of integrated check post in other locations of the international border where border huts will be incorporate. Although the long way, uh, I hope that we'll, we will be witnessing a blooming agribusiness in the future. In the, uh, the line with value addition, uh, it may be, uh, it may, be con uh, may not be concerned with the topic, but uh, it, it is need for the farmer. What, uh, that is, recently the government has amended the Forest Act to pave the way for setting up of wood-based industries in Mizoram. Setting up of wood-based industries will enhance the cost of process timber, which will be profitable for the people. Raw, raw timber has been sold at low cost, which adversely affect the uh, wood industry in Mizoram. Process Food will increase the cost of timber and is expected to bloom the timber market. Lastly, I hope that this seminar will bear fruit in bringing about a positive change in agri marketing and agri business in Mizoram. With this note, I elaborate in this seminar. Thank you. For the uh, 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 sir, uh, to DJ Dato Swamla sir, is, uh, first thank the society for offering training for the needy person. We hope some training, some other services from society will be coming in near future. Uh, he highlighted that uh, as he belongs to Chambai district, which is pretty much agrarian based, and uh, his association since his childhood in agriculture and home uh, cultivation, uh, he talked about people also. Thank you, sir, for uh, consenting to come for this program. And uh, available before time, uh, I would again like to say uh, if, if 
there is a program in my state, 10.30 standing means we will start at quarter to 11 or maybe quarter past 11. Uh, but the uh, Honorable Minister came quarter to uh, quarter past 10 only, 15 minutes before. Actually, we started our function 10 minutes before the scheduled time. Uh, that happens only in visual <laughs> I have seen many places but never started over time. So thank you sir for all this. Uh, I would also like to request our honorable pro vice chancellor sir to come and Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. T.J. Lam Kawala, Minister of Environment, Paris and Climate Change. Guest of Honor, Dr. Sakandarayana, Secretary ISAM. Shri S.M. Malik, G.M. Nava, Hindu. Professor Lodin Kumar, Dean School of Economics and Information Sciences. <laughs> Professor Bhagavad Singh, the leader of uh, this uh, seminar and director from Commerce. Professor N. Rapendra Singh, academic members, Professor Scholar. Students, ladies and gentlemen, I do not know what to say because uh, most of things have already been said by all of our guests, our chief guests, as well as our guest of honors. But uh, being a chairman of this function, I would like to share with you some of my experience of uh, Mizoram and uh, I will be making some comparisons here and there since I belong to Uh I have seen what exactly has happened in there and what is uh, happening, what is good, what good has happened and what bad also has happened. Our friends, uh, as Bhavid as Bhavid said, 34 years of staying in Mizoram and following it's almost uh, more than, little more than one generation. The generation we take it of the years. 85, I came, spent 10 years in the college, and 85, I came to the end that we were in campus. And 2001, I found myself in my transfer to the university. And I decided to be here in Vizor. I did not want to go to Shimong today, I had uh, Many, very strong reasons to take that decision of coming to be here. Because when I had come in 1985, there was lots of uh, prejudices which were fed into my mind by the people who had very little understanding about Mizoram. But when I came here, I'll share with you about the simplicity of the people in Mizoram especially about the political leadership a little later. Even a common man on the street is so simple. I remember it was almost 7 p.m. 17 September 1985 when I put my first dog in the crazy sphere the bus stop through the capital travel bus. I had encountered with the drinker. Don't be scared. Falling. He asked me, sir, who are you? Are you a businessman? I said, no. I am a teacher. I am going to join the Junior University College tomorrow. All her, his, uh, that uh, recordness was over. He, he came, he just shaved his head. <laughs> and he said, good evening, sir. Welcome to Mizoram. Can I help you? I said, no, okay. He took my briefcase, there was a bag, it was raining, drizzling a little. I had to stay in the Sagarila Hotel, which is uh, very close to Aizawa Watch House. That was the hotel where I was, I was 
is supposed to stay. He started walking. I said, give me at least one out of this. He said, no, you are a teacher. I am a former student of the college. Started walking towards the Gila Hotel. And it was uh, maybe uh, almost we had crossed that, uh, that police point, that uh, samurai police point. One jeep came from behind. Well, maybe it was known to that uh, particular boy. Stop it. He asked me to get into the vehicle. Insurgents, you can well. I had come before the peace accord was signed. But then I sometimes I play that I brought the peace. I came in September. Peace accord was signed uh, maybe in February 1986, don't get if uh, I remember that very correctly. And uh, I was coming from Punjab. There was so much of terrorism going on. It is. All the people were scaring me about Mizoram. I said uh, it cannot be worse than Punjab. From insurgency and terrorism, I can understand the press. Again, got into this. But still, there was some fear inside. But then I was young enough. I thought it was open deep. If I thought something goes wrong, I falling, I can jump. <laughs> but anyway, nothing of that set happened. The boy brought me to the Sibirian Hotel. And he gave the special instruction to the manager that he is from Punjab, give him Ruai food. Falling. Falling. And then next day morning again he had come to see me. He said, sorry sir, how he felt sweet, sweet his apology. Sir, sorry sir, he has sent me to I was done. <laughs> No, this is the simplicity of the people. Even I'll share with you one another story about our own political leader who is presently uh, the Home Minister. Well, he was that time, it was somewhere in 2003 or 2004, he was speaker of the Mizoram Assembly. Old friend, we worked together in Pachoga, from 85 or falling. And it was 2003, almost 17, 18 years ago, we had spent it here. One day he said, Vanilla, we have not sat together over lunch or dinner. But I said, you are a speaker, I am a teacher, I'm calling. No, I think uh, it's, I, I, I don't dare to invite you, I'm calling. You invite me a speaker, I'm calling. In a word, so said, is, is something so big. He said, no. I said, if that is so, next Sunday, so, so please do come. There is an invitation, I extended my invitation. He accepted it, he said on Sunday, 11 o'clock, I will ring you. If I don't have any other agreement, I will come. 11 o'clock, I got a call from him, Mr. Padera. Sometimes he's called addressing me by first name, Rampap. He says, Rampap, I'm coming. And the commissioner, education commissioner, who also won, he will also be coming with me. I said, welcome, sir. I was waiting in the evening, around 5 o'clock he was supposed to come. A vehicle came. It was back and up. It was I, my understanding of a speaker coming off all into anybody's business, lots of security, their commandos and their all this. And two days before, intelligence people will come, security will come, they verify all this, are falling everywhere, then the speaker comes. Vehicle came. I just ignored the vehicle. I thought it might be a security vehicle. A big car with the, all this kind of protocol the speaker might be coming. And we took me and my wife were standing outside waiting for it. Vehicle came. There was a big road, a calling took turn. Sir Padera, what are you looking for? I am here. He was he himself was driving. His wife was sitting on the side of him. And one security man was sitting in the back seat. This is the simplicity or the political leadership of this particular state. Uh, friends, uh, lots of experiences to share, but today I am calling on here, here for a special cause. I congratulate the Republic for this national seminar on such an important topic. Every business potentials of Israel. 
And I think uh, uh, Dr. T. Sabagarant for uh, selecting the Department of Commerce of Mizoro University for the organization of this particular event. And uh, I must also uh, congratulate Dr. Sabha Narayan for establishing this uh, body in the 1986 and uh, looking to the approach that he has given me, I am very much impressed the kind of activities that uh, you, this particular body has been taking up. Uh, friends, uh, as far as uh, my experience in Mizoram, indirect experience relating to agriculture or horticulture, the following, I have seen real Mizoram. I have visited the uh, maybe not less than four or five hundred villages. Almost every road. Maybe the political leadership of Mizoram might not have visited that much. Uh, seen that much of Mizoram which I have seen it. Because I was associated with SSA, I have to risk covers 80 schools or 80 villages, let me put it, 80 villages or 80 schools every six months. It was 10 years for that. I visited almost the whole of Mizoram. I went, people are scared of going to Sahaya. I went beyond Sahaya, 70 kilometers beyond Sahaya, visited in those villages. I went even to Malpara. The Bangladesh spot, even that uh, little like that uh, Chakma area, are falling behind the river, cross river to the boat, are falling, visited even those Chakma villages. I have visited all over Mizoram. I have uh, 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 seen the ground realities. I will not talk about education today, I will talk about the village economies in Mizoram. I always uh, feel pity on those villagers who do not have much to do, who do not have those comforts, what they are supposed to have. Because I have seen these comforts with the villagers in Punjab and Haryana. You go to the, the villagers, you will find palacious houses better than Chaligar, better than Delhi, two acre, three acre with steaming pools. All kind of comforts, what you have in America, <coughs> they have there in the village, villages in Punjab. You go to Dhrasar, you go to Kutralao, you go to Gurdaspur, falling. And even the people who come to other districts also are falling. Those comforts have been possible because that green revolution could happen. I have seen the Punjab before the Green Revolution and I have seen the Punjab after the Green Revolution. I would like to share a few experiences. As a child, my father was a good lander radio, he was an officer. We used to visit villages with the father and we used to find the father, the Sadaris, which are now moving in all important cars. Naked, they will not have any shoes in their foot. They will not have any trousers and banana. They will have only that, what you call it, to be a long and rear. And one for the, and go all from two, three places. These were the farmers when I was a child. A falling. But today, farmer in Punjab, a falling. he is like a king. But who has made him a king? the political leadership of the state as well as the country. Because that was the period during which there was shortage of food grains all over the country, including Punjab. We didn't have much to eat. I have now been sharing that experience one day. I was maybe in the second grade. I had to stand in front of the Russian shop falling for four five hours to get five kg of hara. Falling. That time I did not understand. As I grew, I could not understand the atta which was such a low quality PL480 gram from America and that falling the rotten 
kind of wheat used to come from falling. This is what we use have to eat. Falling. But the Punjabi agriculturists, they took almost a pledge that we will make the country free out of this hunger and uh, this kind of begging of falling. We have to go for this kind of food of falling. We are capable, we have all resources. Dr. India also came forward, gave lots of food to the government. And the government also did lots of money and thinking of falling. And then finally, the falling, the government made that green revolution happen. Falling. And today's farmer is very rich, very well off. So therefore, my comparison of rural uh, villages and the villages in Punjab, even in Haryana, or in our sister state, even Himachal, is doing much better. You may say that Punjab is a plain land, Haryana is a plain land, but Himachal is a hilly area, like you. They also have similar problems, but they are global. The advantage they have is very close to Falling Delhi or Chandigarh or following their markets, agricultural markets, or very nearby, falling. But we also have markets nearby. We have Assam, we have Meghalaya, we have Tripura, we have all this, falling. Like Punjab has Haryana, or this, all this, we have to find the markets. But in the initial stage, farmer was so poor, he needed support. This is the government of Punjab and the government we are provided in terms of technology, in terms of seed, in terms of education. And education, I don't mean the formal education. And you might be, my friends might be remembering. There used to be one program called Krishi Darshan. Whatever program we are being given, probably even today, that program is coming. I do not know what the electronic media and what the print media is doing in here in Mizoram to educate the agriculturist the farmers. I think uh, we are too busy with watching sports channels, music channels, and all kind of previous movies and all kind of entertainment uh, channels. Don't have the time. We have not uh, this uh, down the culture among the farmers. That evening, come back from your farm, take a bath, or wash your face and legs, or falling, sit on the TV. And farmers, I am talking about that time, even today, when they came back, come back in the home, the Krishi Darshan program, which is for, only for the farmers, scientists, agriculture scientists, from uh, the Dhyana, agriculture university of Dhyana, or maybe in Hisar, used to come, and uh, they are coming, they talk on the following agriculture issues. And the farmers are also participating in that particular panel. So I think, uh, we, our farmers, I know it was somewhere in 2008, so when your government was there in power, uh, something uh, was uh, done by your government. It was uh, maybe agriculture produced market control, APNC. Act was passed in 2008. And it has not yet till it has not yet been implemented. <coughs> the Association of Mizoram, the all in them, all Mizoram Farmers Union have been demanding for the implementation of this particular act which was passed in 2008. Sorry, it was the your government in 2008. I, uh, I know it was 2008 your government. So we have come back to, uh, to the power. Please look into, they have been demanding. And they have been demanding for many, many, many years. Even I remember somewhere in 2017 18 also, they have made some requests to the, the, the moment following the thing. Uh, we need to understand things in a holistic manner. It is not necessary that we have to produce rice. If production of rice is not maybe viable, not very uh, uh, this uh, the, the kind of uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, the uh, strategies, agricultural strategies which we have been using, that, uh, what we call it uh, shipping cultivation. Uh, for maybe if uh, we cannot produce, because that kind of field trade we have it, uh, for even the plain area that we have in the Plasim district or Nubik district or Chantai district, uh, for if, if that is not uh, maybe this, uh, we can think of many other things. There are hundreds of other things which Mizoram can produce. The kind of soil we have, the kind of climate we have, and the kind of people we have. Because they are basically agriculturists. I sometimes in a very joking manner, I call Mizos as the Sardadis of Northeast. They are well, well built, strong like, well built like Sardadis of falling. They have so much of strength of falling. They look like of falling. Sardaris, only they don't have the color. <laughs> you are, friends, sir, you are, sir, having everything around you. You are blessed people. 10 to 11 lakh population, 21,000 square kilometers of land, per capita land. Maybe this uh, state is the richest. You think of UB, you think of Punjab. Maybe around 50,000 uh, square kilometer of land, almost 3 crore people. We divide 50,000 by 3 crores. Here we divide 20,000 kilometers by 11 left. When I think 85, according to 81 census, the population was around 6 lakhs, if I remember correctly, falling. Yes, no, it was around 5 lakhs. Which, after 30 years falling, has become around 11 lakh or maybe 2021, because the growth of population which is on the high side, maybe we will be having around 13 lakh population in 2021. Now, even now, this uh, 30 lakh population, uh, falling the, 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 the size of land that we have and the nature of the soil, soil is very fertile, 8 9 months the rain. And uh, what are maybe harvesting sorting system or falling maybe on the head of that's what uh, Dr. T. Uh, uh, Ranji was trying to talk about or falling that during dry season we have real water harvesting system for our consumption at home, but we do not have any rain water harvesting system for agriculture agricultural use. Like, uh, that uh, need to be thought of upon uh, so that uh, we can uh, do this. Now friends, uh, everything is uh, favorable. Only thing is we have not woken up. Falling. Maybe we have, uh, have become a little more lethargic. But the farmers who is actually doing things are falling. He is still ready to do it. It is not you and me who are good in the field and uh, in the land, falling. So we need to, 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 to uh, understand that all kind of uh, the factors, the parameters that we require it for agriculture or horticulture, they are available within the state. Only the state government uh, has to uh, uh, has to come up uh, and uh, do little more serious planning and uh, try to understand the following what we. Used to say SWOT analysis. Whenever we do any planning, planning for agriculture, planning for horticulture, or planning for anything that falling related to other allied services, we may have to do a little uh, SWOT analysis. What is possible, is even possible, and what will be more profitable to the farmers. In case of Punjab, of falling, farmers are so lucky. Because that uh, the Kali government have been very, very supportive. They announced the procurement price of the rice as well as the wheat in advance. They announced that this year you produce as much rice as you can, as much wheat as you can. The procurement price will be maybe 2000 dollars 2500 or 400 Farmer knows before what cost you will be getting. But here our farmer does not know anything. Everything is so uncertain for him. 
तो गवर्नमेंट कंपनी का केम एंड शुड इट इज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एनी गवर्नमेंट वेदर मेघालय वेदर त्रिपुरा वेदर पंजाब और हरियाणा सी होल द हेड ऑफ द पार्टनर्स फॉर 10 15 इयर्स बट देयर आफ्टर दे विल नॉट अलाउ टू होल्ड देयर हैंड टुडे द पंजाब फार्मर does not uh, ask for any market he said you don't bother about me i know that i have to sell my produce he is responsible he has his own, own transport he has his own storage so of the big farmers are falling through the market they have the cold storage are falling they know are falling when to sell and where to sell but here the farmer are falling is compelled to throw his produce into the hand of hands of the brokers who come from green guns or maybe from rajasthan or maybe from somewhere else because the farmer knows his produce is perishable he cannot hold it for a long time what are price he gets he has to dispose it off at the least possible following it is not so friends production That's important. Production we can increase. The problem is the market. We are not a farmer to be able to sell. Let the government be smart and say, "Let the people make ten thousand farmers, twenty thousand farmers, thirty thousand farmers." You don't know have any serious kind of this money. Upon funds are coming, have been coming. How we have been utilizing? And where we have been utilizing? and how effectively the farmers have been using those this we have to need it we have been passing our money to the farmer pleasing them not monetary that he is using it for the purpose for this he has been provided or he is buying television fridges motor bikes spending on all lavishly on the house and all this no productive Yes, the items he is spending falling, but in case of Punjab, our falling monetary was was there. Uh, this support uh, need to be given with proper proper monetary falling in, and uh, market is uh, uh, the responsibility of falling of the government. Our falling is trying to procure good reviews. You have the government storage. You develop your own big cold storage. Storage. I remember when Kulla Chandrayaan he became the minister of Assam. Now he's a friend, a very, very, very close friend. When I met him for the first time, when he had become the land revenue minister, I asked him, "Kucha, I call him Kucha. I call him Kucha. How you are going to be different than Congress?" What are your policies about the agriculturist? I remember, I had very straight, straight question asked through through to him, and uh, he is a very clever, very intelligent, very sharp man, and uh, he gave me a very very satisfactory reply. But then I said, "Chum, I will give you one." What am I not covered is going to do? Point of this, I do not know, sir. You have been there in power for many years. Last uh, 10 years, following uh, maybe again in your hometown, following uh, I don't know how many more years you will be there, maybe another 10 years. Uh, but without farmers, without village economy, following uh, growing in Mizoram, following uh, Mizoram has no future. Mizoram is not ideal. Mizoram, uh, the real Mizoram is near the villages. Uh, that we must leave it. That uh, if you look into this, all of the people in private sector, apart from commerce and management. We talk about primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector, the contribution of agriculture. For yeah, primary sector is agriculture, secondary is industry, or tertiary is the services. What is the contribution of this agriculture sector in in Mizoram specifically and maybe at the all-year level? It is around 17 percent of GDP are from uh, there from agriculture sector, and uh, around 40 percent comes from industries. And uh, uh, 17, 40, no, sorry, 30 percent. Around 30 percent comes from the industry, and 53, 4 percent comes from the service sector. 
not agriculture. In case of mineral, if you look into the contribution of agriculture to the reserve economy of GDP or, or whatever you call it, it's only 5%. No more the percentage of people involved in agriculture is mineral, is at, of the honorable minister also has said it's around 60%. 60% of the people involved in, in Mizoram in agriculture, the contribution of the agriculture sector is around 5% in Mizoram. All India level is 70%. Where we are, what are we doing? 86, if 14 plus 19, 33 years have passed after the abort of the independent statehood, everything is in our hand. We have to decide, we have to plan. These are other people. We have to follow. Friends, I think uh, sometimes as I must appreciate the authorities, those who are there in the power that particular time, maybe Pratap Singh Karo was the chief minister at that time. The kind of support they provided to the agriculturists that made the green revolution possible. We should also come forward. 10 years, 15 years, 30 years is not a long period in the life of any state and political entity. 10 to 20 years, let us hold their hands, give them support, let the government go on them is little, appalling even loss also. We don't mind. But for whom? For our own people who are there in the villages. So we have to understand that, we have to plan, and lots of things are possible. Appalling. Punjab, wheat and rice, these two things. We have many things. We have ginger, we have uh, turmeric, we have banana, we have pine knuckle, we have uh, even, uh, what we call it, jackfruit, even bamboo shoots. The people in nurses, three people in nurses. One is jackfruit people. Second is this, uh, your, uh, what you call it, uh, this uh, bamboo shoot pickle. Third is, third is, uh, maybe something more is important again. Now, pickle industry, 135 crore people in this country, you cannot supply the pickle on every dining table in the country. You produce as much as you can, let there be some projects, upon food processing projects relating to ginger, relating to web, this, uh, Bamboo shoes or 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 that jackfruit, three pickles, Mizoram brand. Give more freedom to the farmers. Produce as much as you can. We have an industry where we can process it and capture not only the Indian market and even the country nearby. We are lucky in that sense. We have two borders, international borders, is a landlocked state from south east to, to, to west or through south or only connectivity or there with the Assam, Manipur or maybe between the Caravan. So friends, uh, I feel uh, very bad when I go to a village, I don't find compass with the people living in the village. I think uh, we need to do something for this. And, uh, Agriculture, business, according to is a big potential. Mizoram cannot imagine what potential you have, what you can do. And you will realize it only when you will do it. And things are, friends, possible. They need to be planned. Some initiative need to be, need to be taken. With this, our friends, I once again, Congratulate uh, the department for having this uh, seminar and I thank uh, uh, Dr. P. Sotanaranji and I also thank uh, our honorable chief guest, uh, Shri T.J. Ramadhan, the honorable minister, for coming and blessing this uh, occasion. Following. And uh, I also have uh, thank uh, the GM, she has a Malik of our award. And uh, so I like it, uh, your inputs were so wonderful. I hope the kind of support the Nabad is giving to, to, to the agriculturists.
directly or indirectly, are falling through the street problem, talking about the bellings, are falling. And uh, I am sure are falling that uh, in the whole family, all in our bodies, not only here, but we will. Or from 82 or what 82, you said 82 are falling. I think you might have done uh, wonders in having your work. Hard works are like a great test. We thank you for this. And uh, please, uh, in case of Mizoram, for hard works, for following something more can be done. I think we should do it. Because this is the only country where the farmers are having to meet in society. That's very, very touchy. From farmers committing suicides, those who produce the food for our survival, they themselves have to die because they are not able to get back the cost of their production. This is only one business here. Agriculture is the only business where the buyer fixes the price, not the producer. When you produce a pen, you fix the price. You know, these are 30 rupees or 50 rupees or 20 rupees. But in case of agriculture, when I produce vegetables, I want to, I go to the market, wholesale market to sell out my produce. The commission of that sitting there, he will determine the price of my cauliflower or my tomatoes and my potatoes. I will not be able to say that this potato I will give you only 30 rupees kg or 30 rupees kg. It is happening only in the agriculture field. And maybe what uh, 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 maybe uh, he was uh, trying to highlight that the uh, unions and associations, maybe the farmers are not been uh, able to impress on their respective governments to take care of their needs and give them at least following the double, if not the triple, of uh, the cost of production. To me, that would be triple on the With the kind of work which they do it, none of us can do it. In the, in the psychology, we call it the hierarchy of human needs, the physical needs, the basic needs, for survival is the food and is produced by the farm. And all other needs, psychological needs and other needs now later. Therefore, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I salute our former Prime Minister, Shafi, you said, Jai 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 We must, uh, in the real sense, we must salute our farmers. We must salute because the day we will not get the vegetables in the market, the day we will not get the rice in the market, then we will realize who is in power. Okay. And we realize it when I was talking to you, Sir Punjab of Punjab of Punjab before the revolution in Punjab after the revolution. Thank you so much, Sir. Uh, I congratulate uh, the government and the service seminar for the success. Thank you, Sir, for the content review. I could see even an agri entrepreneur in him. His education is that we know. Uh, he talked about his experience, 25 years experience in Mizoram and even longer experience in Punjab. We were talking about agriculture. He started his speech with sharing his experience in Mizoram when he came. How the days changed from 1985 till now. 30 years. Uh, he congratulated the society and the department for selecting the right topic. He highlighted about village economy, the problems, the, 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 the lack of facilities and other things in the villages, what he has visited in the last 30 years throughout the province of Mizoram. Uh, he compared the problem of uh, farmers in Mizoram with the uh, farmers of Punjab and he mentioned that uh, the farmers in Punjab are very well off, they are very very rich 
and all of here is just reverse out there and that is very true we have all have seen this sir uh, farming in punjab means it is a very big thing uh, a good size of land a farmer with good size of land means he must be having four five suv this is a common thing but we are having a far, very big farm house and how those facilities what even we cannot we can think of is available with them in punjab but when we see farmers in mizoram Forty-one, five percent of that is available here, sir. And uh, he credited for this development of agriculture in Punjab to Green Revolution. And Green Revolution means the political willingness is required to bring that, and not only political willingness from uh, within, from the farmers, from the society, everyone we have to contribute. Government has to provide the facility, and all together, if we go, then only that kind of real green revolution will come. Otherwise, that will remain only books. We keep on uh, turning the pages, we keep on reading it. It happened, and it will remain in books. But in Punjab, it is on land. So that we have to do. That is his idea in his speech. His speech. Then he mentioned that. Uh, after giving an example to Punjab and Haryana, he told it is plain, but uh, don't worry, don't see it like this because Himachal Pradesh is doing very well in agriculture and it is also a hilly state. So being a hilly state is cannot be an excuse for less production. Later on, he mentioned that 60% uh, of population is contributing 5% of the GDP as uh, GDP. Uh, that we have to turn around. That is happening here. Uh, he talked about uh, his days as child when after returning from his school he used to see Krishi Darshan. How many of you learned this word, have heard this word? Krishi Darshan, okay, one person is there. I know one, two or three will be there. I, I also used to, not used to see this. Uh, but uh, I remember television in my city came around 85, 86. I was 10 year old at that time. So after the exams, what to do? TV is a new thing. so. Okay, now we have to see TV full day. Time was 7 to 7.30, I remember. So we used to see Krishi Darshan because for that, because nothing else was available. Nothing, no other channel, no MTV and no this and that. So we used to see. But uh, they have been grown seeing those things. So that uh, uh, that kind of thing we have to inculcate from the beginning of our next uh, generation. He talked about uh, serious issue, APMC Act 2008 passed. Uh, but uh, more than 11 years past, it is not yet implemented, it is, uh, although it is being demanded by different societies, different associations. Uh, that is a serious matter of concern. Uh, he talked about potential, I uh, told that uh, there is potential in Mizoram. Only thing is we have to translate it into the product. We have to convert that potential into reality. Uh, he talked about rainwater harvest, harvesting, he talked about infrastructure available and what else we have to do for the information availability. He talked about better agri-management requirements. We are not having that much of facilities which is very much required. Uh, if I remember, uh, if I quote one of my experience I saw in uh, UP some three years back or uh, maybe four years now, there was a bumper crop of tomato. Bumper crop was there, uh, four years back. And uh, even for digging that potato out of the, uh, the earth, that cost was more than the produce itself. But the problem is that the farmers were there, if they don't take it out, that will spoil the land. So they have to take it out. But then labor is required to carry that potato from here to market or somewhere. They were ready to uh, throw it. But for that also they have to pay labor for, for throwing. Then what they happen for uh, the newspapers only, I read, that uh, the farmers what they used to do is they used to keep all those potato in a sack and no need to carry anywhere because no one is going to steal it. So they used to leave it in the land itself. And next day when they used to leave there, potato was there but sack is stolen. So the price of sack was much more than price of one sack of potato. So that was the problem. What we need is management. Every management is required. So that he wanted to highlight with this. He gave potential for pickle industry, some other industries also he mentioned, but pickle one of the things he mentioned. Uh, he talked about some serious concern for suicide of all A serious thing, the persons who are doing all kind of farming uh, uh, activities for us so that we can feed and they are able to survive. That is a serious matter of concern. Uh, 
uh, he highlighted that uh, nearly 55 percent of GDP is coming from uh, service sector, 35 or something is coming out of industry, and some 15, 20 percent is coming out of agriculture. Now think, what we need for survival? Food. Industry will not give us food for sure. We can get Maggi, for, but for Maggi we need Maida. For Maida we have to go to agriculture. Service will only transfer this thing to that place, that's all. Not to ID. We need food to eat and that is possible only from agriculture. So, uh, government is also having very less investment in agriculture. They should increase, I feel, they should increase uh, investment in agriculture so that the problem in agriculture, maybe the agri agriculture actually should be changed. And then uh, he ended his speech with uh, the statement from uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri, our uh, former Prime Minister, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, very appropriate. We should keep it with us always. Thank you, sir, for all your speech and all the inputs you have given for our rest, rest, uh, next two days' discussions. Thank you, sir. Now I would request my friend, uh, Dr. Andrew Kendro Singh, from the Copper Road of Manning. Dr. D. Satyanayaya, 
African Society Forum of Agricultural Marketing, coming a long way from Rajendra Nagar, Hyderabad, and it has a new and they uh, also, as we said, a set environment, all this is a desert environment. So I thank for coming a long way and uh, giving also in the department, choosing the Department of Commerce for organizing such a important national seminar and business potential of the Thank you, sir. Next, I want to thank uh, our team of Chinese Professor Moulton Kumar, Professor in the Library of Profession Science, for his time and uh, guessing the function to the program. And uh, I want to thank our ICOT, Professor Arten Dushin, head of the department, for continuing and organizing help. He is the one who brings all the efforts and I also express, want to express uh, other members who uh, come from state government, from NABAR, and from other departments, professors, and other teachers from different departments of the university. And I also want to thank our students, research scholars, media people, and the staff of the administration department of the Durham University and the staff of our in office, Department of Commerce, and all the people gathering here in this function. And once again, thanks all of you for addressing this function in this morning. Thank you all.